my name is Lucy. I'm from the Framingham Public Library, and today I wanted to book talk some nonfiction books, new ones that I think you might be interested in. You know, every year when I come to talk to the schools, I like to say, you know, now that it's summer, you can read nonfiction on subjects that you're interested in. You don't have to stick to the subjects that they teach in school during the school year. So, um, I just wanted to remind you of the wealth of nonfiction that we have, and we have it in physical books that you can request, or you can get it in ebook format. So some of the books I have are real books, and some of them are just covers downloaded from the ebook version. So not quite as exciting as a real book, but now I know people like animals, so animals are always a popular topic, whatever animals you're interested in, or different ways of looking at them. So, for example, we have this book called Nature's Ninja, and it's animals with spectacular skills. So they compare all these animals with skills that ninjas have and show you how that works in the animal kingdom. So, you know, ninjas can sneak in almost anywhere and seemingly climb walls and do impossible feats. So they talk about... Um, geckos who can also do amazing climbing feats um, and they explain how the, nin the geckos are able to do that because they finally figured it out. For a while they thought they had adhesive on their paws but if you look closely at this picture they actually have all these little hairy structures on their paws or toes that are called um, setae. And the setae, each of those little things, have even more little structures on them down there, which are called sequelae. And in this picture, it shows you how they create a bond with um, the little molecules in the wall and um, let them climb even on ceilings. Wouldn't that be fun to be able to climb on ceilings? Um, so, of course, we have lots of cute animals, too. I didn't find any books today about them, but lots of cute animals. And since we're talking kind of about animals and science, we have a lot of books about science as well, but things that you might enjoy doing. Like, how about the unofficial guide to science experiments in Minecraft? So, you can do things in Minecraft that maybe you couldn't do at home because you're not supposed to use fire or other things at home. Or you might not have all the ingredients at home, but you might have them in Minecraft if you go out looking. For example, this book tells you how you can make, make fire fireworks in Minecraft. See how nice those are. But it explains what people actually use to make fireworks. And so you'd have to find all those materials in your Minecraft game to do that. And then you can make firecraft, so fireworks, so you'd know how to do that. It also tells you how to code in Minecraft so that you can change some of the rules or uh, how things work. Make modifications or mods with scriptcraft. So that sounds interesting if you want your own version of Minecraft. You can also investigate things more from the engineering perspective. This is a book called what's inside a remote controlled car. So if you ever wondered why you could control remote con uh, remote controlled cars, this sort of takes it apart. So you're not destroying your remote controlled car, but it shows you how to take it apart and then labels all the parts and explains how the remote connects to the car through a little antenna, which is the little red wire right there. And so if you were curious about how things are put together and how they work, that might be a fun book for you to read as well. Some of you might like making things. So we have one, uh, we have a book online that I could bring today that's called Awesome Lego Creations. That looks pretty cool. I like the dragon on it since summer reading is Imagine Your Story. But it's awesome Lego creations with bricks that you already own, so you don't have to go buy specialized sets. You can just use whatever you have and still make awesome things. Um, you might also, you know, everybody while we've been locked down has been doing baking, especially baking bread for your parents. But I've been baking a lot of things like brownies and cookies, which is not good for me. But 
it does taste very good. So you can also find online some great baking books. This one is the complete baking book for young chefs. Doesn't that look good? All kinds of different things that you could bake. So if you want to spend your summer learning how to bake, that would be a great thing to do. Um, some people also enjoy doing, you know, maybe you've been a little isolated while you've been home alone um, or just with your family, not really home alone. So there's this great book I just found um, that's online and it's how to do nothing with nobody all alone by yourself, but it gives you lots of different activities and games that you can do if you find yourself by yourself for a while and it will keep you from being bored. But we hope that as things open up, you won't be so bored this summer and you'll be able to see your friends at least on a distance. Um, now, and you know, maybe eventually there'll be sports. So, so, or if there's not, you can read about sports. This one is called A Sporting Chance and it's a book about the history of the Paralympic Games and how uh, it got started and who took part in it and the different kinds of sports you have in Paralympics now. Um, and then, if you like history, since that was the history of sports, we of course always have history books. This one is called Born Curious and is actually a group biography about women who have done some amazing things. These are actually scientists, so these are famous women scientists that maybe they're not famous, you haven't heard of them, but after you read that book you will. So that will be great. And then you might just want to do goofy things or combine sort of different interests. This book is called Medieval Lego. And this guy who liked history and also liked Legos has put together a book where he gives you the history, but then he also illustrates it with these amazing Lego-like buildings. I didn't know that you could, that you had all, all these special Lego type things. So that's an abbey back in the 1200s. But they also have things like here's the Peasants' Revolt. I don't know if you knew that the Peasants' Revolted in England back in, what date is that? 1381. So it gives you the history and then it tries to recreate one of the scenes in amazing Legos. So as you can see, I, I brought hardly any books today just because it was hard to get them from the library. But it should be easy through ebooks and eventually with curbside pickup. So don't be um, don't be put off by by that. There's still plenty of books on all different topics. I didn't bring a lot today, but you know there's dinosaurs, frogs, uh, pet dogs, and tricks you can teach them, and you know books about trucks or motorcycles or anything that you might want. So you know keep looking. Overdrive, Libby, Sora. All those places for books, not just on your reading list, but also nonfiction that you're interested in. And I hope you find lots of reading to do this summer. Thanks.